Okay, we're going to try something new with the videos. We're still going to do the sermons, but I want to do something shorter, something a little easier to digest on a quick basis. And I want to start out with something that I've never heard preached before, but something that I think is of the utmost importance. And that is to tell you that as a believer, you cannot sin. And that's backed up by the Bible. In 1 John chapter 3, starting with verse 5, the King James Version reads, and ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. So right off the bat, here's what we see. Jesus took away our sins. There's no sin in Jesus. Jesus lives in us. That means there's no sin in us. And it goes on and says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. And again, we're going to get into this with these smaller videos later on, I think. I believe sin is unbelief. So I'm not saying that nobody can sin. I'm just saying that a believer can't sin. Because if sin is unbelief and you're a believer, then by definition you can't sin. If Jesus, who has no sin in him, lives in you, then there's no sin in you. If you believe that he's in there, that's it, man. That's all you need. So it goes on and says, Whoever sinneth has not seen him, neither known him. Which means you don't believe in him. So again, a sinner is an unbeliever. And Jesus came away to came to take away that sin. He came to take away that unbelief by giving us something to believe in. So in verse 7 it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Which goes back to the, the revelation that it's not what you do that defines who you are. It's who you are that defines what you do. When you understand that you're righteous, you do righteousness. Faith without works is dead, so you understand that when you believe, when you believe that Jesus is living his life in you, then it stops being about what you do, and it starts being about what he has done and what he is doing in you. So in verse 8 it goes on and says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. And how did the devil sin from the beginning? How did the serpent get his foothold in? By telling Adam and Eve a different report by giving them something different to believe in, by lying to them and taking them out of the truth and showing them that, you know, lying to them and, and telling them that there was another way to get to God. And Jesus said, there is no other way. He said, any man that tries to come into the sheepfold any other way but the door, he's a thief and a robber. So again, what we see here is that the works of the devil is the lie that man believed. The works of the devil, sin is unbelief. And again, we're going to go into this more because even Jesus said in another place that the Holy Spirit came to convict the world of sin because they believe not on him. It's all about what you believe. And if you believe right, your actions flow from that. If you believe you're righteous, you do righteousness. If you believe that Jesus lives in you and you live in him, if you dwell in him, then you can't sin. You can't sin. And that's what it says as it goes on. In verse 8, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus destroyed the works of the devil, the works of unbelief, by giving us something to believe in, by giving us faith, by giving us repentance, by giving us his spirit and his mind. He took away the sin of the world. He didn't just defeat it. He totally and completely annihilated it and got rid of it. That's what he came to do. He came to take sin out of the equation so that believers could live his abundant life by letting him live his abundant life in believers. And then in verse 9 it says it straight out it says whoever is born of God doth not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin because he is born from God. Guys if we're believers we're not sinners. And I'm not talking about just I don't have a sin nature but sometimes I sin. I'm talking about believers cannot sin. Sin is not the problem. Sin is not the issue. If we're focused on sin we're not focused on Jesus and we need to be focused on Jesus. This is not a sin hunt. This is a treasure hunt. And the treasure is in the earthen vessel. And that's who we are. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. If we're full of the Holy Spirit, there's no room for anything else. If we're full of the light that makes us the light of the world, then there's no room for darkness. Guys, stop struggling with sin. It was taken care of. It was done. And let me say this to close. If you're still defining sin according to the law, you're in the wrong covenant. The law was given for the old covenant. The law defined sin so that you would know what Jesus came to get rid of, to take care of. Believers can't sin. You're not a sinner. You can't sin. 
if you believe. Amen.